classic hits and today's biggest tunes. Six Towns Radio. B Festival 2012. I can hear Chalissa in the background, uh, but I'm in the dressing room of Frank Turner. How are you, mate? You okay? Um, yes, I'm good. I have recently woken up and I just had a massage, which is very nice. I saw that. I saw that. You know yeah. what I mean? That's uh, that's good. It's decadent rock and roll behaviour, I know, but it is free, so yeah. uh, <laughs> why not? I want to talk to you about rock and roll. You know, um, to me, rock and roll is about partying, drinking, staying up late, and that's rock and roll. But a massage, you could throw that in there. That's part of looking after yourself. Yeah, well, it just it seems quite kind of sort of later period Roman Empire, just showing up, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> getting yourself a quick massage. But like I say, if it's free, then uh, that's fine with me, and it's a nice way to start your day. Do you feel relaxed? I feel more relaxed than I did before. Yeah, I had a deep tissue massage once, and they proper beat me up, but it was good after. At the time, I thought, oh, hey up. They started pulling muscles out they didn't know I had, but after, yeah, yeah. it was good. And it's like Thai massage when you basically pay someone to beat you. Yeah. <laughs> pulp. Is that done? Yeah, <laughs> I, I have had Thai massages before, and they're great. Yeah, I just want to thank you first of all for um, supporting Oatcake Day. You were in Stoke last year at the Sugar <laughs> Mill, and uh, Oatcake Day was only coming up to year two. Well, we just had year three, and you went on stage at the Sugar Mill and mentioned it, and uh, that was a big thing. It's a cause that's very dear to my heart. <laughs> the the, the oatcakes, letting the world know about oatcakes. Yeah, well, we've actually had an Oatcake Day book come out this year, and it includes some of the recipes from the people of Stoke-on-Trent, um, including some famous faces from Stoke-on-Trent, and your picture has made it into the book. I wish you'd have brought a copy wow. now, you know what I mean? Well, I'm a published I, author. I, that's, that's amazing, I'm very pleased to hear that. <laughs> so, um, let's talk a little bit about some of the things you've been up to this year. Um, of course, the Wembley Arena Tour is one of the biggest things you've done. Probably yes. is the biggest thing you've done. Let's uh, talk about it first. Yeah, Wembley, Wembley was great. It was, um, it was an awful lot of work went into that show, um, and it was uh, everything went exactly like it was supposed to go. And it was, um, I mean, it was a funny one for me because first of all, the actual gig itself went by in a blur because we had so much of a build up to it. And also, I mean, to be honest, somebody asked me the other day what was going through your head while you were playing, and the answer is, I was thinking, don't mess it up, don't <laughs> mess it up, don't mess it up, and just felt kind of relieved when we got off. But it was, it was amazing. It really felt like a culmination of, of years of work, actually, to sort of get to that stage. And it was a big show, and it didn't feel like a soulless arena show. It felt like a kind of intimate gig, yeah. and that um, was something I spent a lot of time thinking about and working on, and, and we succeeded, I think. Yeah, I was going to ask you, you know, was it everything you expected and more? Yeah, it was good. I was just, I felt very kind of sort of humbled by um, everyone, you know, just sort of um, being on side with it, do you know what I mean? I think that, you know, some people were kind of slightly, hmm, about me doing an arena show, myself included, at some points, and because there are, sometimes those shows can be really kind of like disconnected, and, uh, and it just, it wasn't like that at all, and it was just a great feeling. Yeah, and there's a DVD out, Road to Wembley. Yes, it's coming out at the start of September. I should know the date, yeah. I can't remember the date. Never ask artists about dates, release yeah, no, dates and stuff like that. Unless it's a first release, they don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's just, or, or like, you know, like a main album release. But uh, no, it's coming out very soon. Um, it has the complete show, it has a documentary film about the build up to the show, it has lots of little extra Easter eggy type things as well. And uh, yes, it's really good. And the name Road to Rem Wembley, um, to me, it sounds like a football DVD. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I suppose so. One of the funny things for the show with us, there was a really big match uh, on the day after the Wembley show at the stadium um, involving Liverpool, possibly. I know nothing about football <laughs> at all. But anyway, we were staying in a hotel like right next to the Wembley sort of complex, if you like. And uh, our sort of like after gig party kind of ran into the pre gig party of a bunch of Liverpool fans. And it was actually really, really funny because we were all sat in the bar. I don't think they had any idea who me and my crew were or what was going on, but we were just getting totally trashed together. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, another thing we mentioned last time we spoke was um, how many gigs you do. I think to that point, midway through that year, you'd done 100. And you said like you're probably going to do about 150, including a new tour that you were doing. Um, and you're still doing that. Yeah, um, if, if not more, I think I ended up doing about 220 last mm -hmm. year in total. Um, this year, there's a s slightly fewer this year just because I'm recording an album, which mm -hmm. takes time. But uh, yeah, I mean, I like gigging. Today is number 1258. Um, and uh, it's just, it's, I enjoy playing music, I enjoy playing live, I enjoy travelling, so it's kind of 
thumbs up. You mentioned BB King, he was the man for yeah. gigging. Uh, 300 a year? <laughs> yeah, for, for like 30, 40 years, yeah. unbroken. And he still does 100 a year now, it's mad. Does he, um, your family life suffer from being on the road all the time? Yeah, I miss, I miss mm-hmm. uh, weddings and birthdays and I miss stag do's and all that kind of thing. But I mean, which, which does get kind of sad at times, you know, particularly kind of at this stage in my life, the, the weddings and stag do's part of it, do you know what I mean? A lot of my really close friends go out and have their kind of, you know, their man evening of their lives and I'm not there and that, that makes me sad. But, um... But it's it's just it's part of the deal, really. Um, lots of other aspects of my life are great, so you you take the good with the bad. Yeah, I'm a DJ, so I'm the same. You know, if somebody's part, but then again, they ask me to DJ for them. <laughs> <laughs> I get that. So you probably get that. Can you play at my wedding? Uh, yeah, yeah, occasionally. Although I think um, my close friends know me well enough that I find that kind of like a slightly awkward thing. The problem with playing at weddings is, generally speaking, there's about two or three people who are really stoked that you're there, and then there's quite a lot of relatives kind of looking at their watch and going, "Who is this guy?" <laughs> Um, and so it's 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 a weird vibe. Yeah, you say every show is a celebration, which it should be. Um, so what are you going to bring to V this afternoon? Uh, I'm going to bring, um, hopefully, ooh, can I say this? Uh, I'm hopefully going to bring just a, a little taste of punk rock to V Festival. Uh, bless it, it's not a very punk kind of enterprise. And, um, you know, it's, it's funny being here this year because obviously there's a thing, you either do V or you do Reading. And I've done Reading five years in a row and it was sort of like, the guys who organise Reading are, are, are good friends of mine and they just said look we have to give you a year off this year um, so we thought okay we'll go and V have been offering for me for a and few years and you got years. to the main stage last year as well yeah yeah and I mean Reading was sort of saying that they wanted to give me a really big slot next year so they were like look take a year off this year so we came, came to do V um, it is more kind of mainstream than things that I usually do I'm quite sort of aggressive in the sense that in my conviction that I will play to anyone anywhere and I'm not going to have anyone tell me that I, that I am or I'm not allowed to do this, that or the other. But uh, it is, I do slightly feel fish out of water here, to a, li- to a small degree. But yeah, hopefully we'll bring just sort of a taste of something a little more kind of visceral and gritty to, to leave us. Good, good, that's what we're expecting off you, wouldn't expect any less. Uh, you're next door to Tom Jones, we might hear his vocal warm-ups in a bit, so we're going to have to finish here. But thanks a lot, <laughs> Frank Turner, My and pleasure, enjoy V. Cool, thank you.